we got this we got the shake ishmael bilal right here he gonna tell us his story on how he accepted islam you know and uh how he uh views uh the journey and everything inshallah ta'ala uh, go right ahead and get into it inshallah Imam al Mursaleen, Muhammad ibn Abdullahi, Tahirina wa Tahibina, wa Ba'd. I, you know, my journey to Islam is very uh, interesting, you know, uh, I guess to kind of keep it 100, as we say. Uh, it's interesting, but it's not, um, it's not so unique, right? It's not so unique. But looking back, past the 23 or so years that I've been Muslim and looking even further to that to when I was a young kid um, and Allah Tabarakwa Ta'ala was planting uh, the seed the seeds of Tawheed you know if you could call it that um, I can remember being you know five six years old sitting in uh, Sunday school and uh, I remember when we learned the Ten Commandments and we studied the Ten Commandments, and uh, one of those commandments being that know that you know your Lord is one, right? So I remembered that ten, that, that 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 number one commandment, and you know as I grew, and so when I first started off as a little kid, we was going to a Lutheran church in San Francisco on Church Street, and uh, when we moved to Missouri, to St. Louis. In the, in, the, in the 80s, in the mid 80s, um, we started to go to a Baptist church. And that's where, you know, I really got into uh, uh, religion or, you know, whatever you want to call it, spirituality or, you know, trying to get my God consciousness right. You know, although, of course, you know, at the same time, I'm, 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 I'm buck wild, I'm crazy, I'm doing, doing everything, you know what I mean? I, I probably, you know, started drinking when I was about 13 and you know how that stuff progresses you know through crime through you know being a gang member and all that different type of stuff so um, but I was still you know like I said Allah to Baraka Ta'ala he had placed that seed of of God consciousness there you know uh, so I, I used to have this thing to where no matter how much dirt I did in any day that I couldn't sleep without praying you know, I so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, I didn't feel, you know, I always, it was always like, you know, I'm doing so much dirt, like I don't even know if I'm gonna wake up. So, you know, let me get this situation right with my God before I go to sleep, you know. And, uh, and so anyways, you know, I guess, you know, having, uh, having faith that whole time, it was a good thing. So, uh, you know, when I got probably like about 16 years old, I decided, I said, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna become a preacher. I think I'm gonna become a preacher. But the main point that I kept seeing in myself for, I used to say, man, you know, remembering that lesson from, you know, way back that, uh, that God is one, you know, I said, you know, so I need to uh, put some focus on God, right? And if I get the chance to preach, I'm gonna preach about God because I believe that, that you know, the preacher preachers is talking about Jesus too much. You know what I mean? So I wanted to, I wanted to, to preach about a lot of Allah to Allah. I didn't know what it was that I was getting set up for, but a lot of to Allah was, you know, he was trained to me. It's like what they say about Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that while Omar was worshiping all of these gods in the Kaaba, he was beloved to Allah to Allah to Allah. You know, Allah loved Omar even at that time because he knew the believer that Omar would come. So, mm -hmm. you know, Allah Tabarakwa Ta'ala always kept me in a state of God consciousness, believing in him, you know? And so anyways, um, when I was probably like about, uh, you know, I had different experiences though that exposed me to Islam. I had a cousin who accepted Islam and I had an uncle who accepted Islam. And so, you know, it would be those different things. Oh, you know, yeah. your uncle don't eat this. Or you know your cousin doesn't eat this, or you know your cousin changed her name from uh, from um, shucks. I can't even remember what my cousin's name was. Subhanallah. Before, before her Muslim name. Wow. La la. Allah Muslim. But uh, Cheryl. Yeah, that's what it was. Her name was Cheryl, and then you know what I'm saying she changed her name to uh, 
Amina, Palau, right? <laughs> right? So that kind of like stuck for our family name. Pilau stuck for our family name, you know? For, for the Muslims that was in our family, you know? And so anyways, she accepted Islam. Then her, then her, her brother Harun accepted Islam. She got married at Master Wharf Dean in Oakland. And in like oh, yeah, 19, that was my one right in there. In like 1980, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like there at her wedding, you know what I'm saying? So I can remember way back then running around that match you for you know for that particular event. And so that was kinda like Allah to Butter Allah saying, Okay, here, well I'm gonna give you a little taste, I'm gonna give you a little taste, I'm gonna give you a little taste. So mm -hmm. like I said, my story is not that unique, but you know, it does have its finer points. So anyways in nineteen in nineteen um, in about nineteen ninety three, um or before 93 is when I really started getting, you know, getting locked up and going to jail. And um, I finally, you know, caught a little bit of time and I went to the to the prison. And, um, you know, mashallah to barakallah, I had a brother who, uh, you know, and at that time I was like, really like, man, like, I don't, I need some structure in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I get out, I gotta have structure. So what ended up happening was, I started to really try to kind of gravitate towards a religion that I felt had like rituals and stuff that I had to do every day. Because mm -hmm. gangbanging is stuff you got to do every day, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? Your rag got to be in a certain pocket. Your pants got to be a certain way. Your hat can't be tilted to this side or that mm -hmm. side. Or you can't go down this street. You can't go down that street. And I know why I want to live. I want to leave this life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking for something. So I had kind of like was looking at Catholicism because they had a lot of stuff that they did. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Hail Marys and some extra stuff. So I'm like, man, I need some of that. You know, this other stuff is only working on Sunday. You know? Mm -hmm. So anyways, what ended up happening one day is I had went out to the yard and uh, to go lift weights. And um, I came back and I had like a picture of the Virgin Mary in my cell. And I had a picture of, uh, I mean, and I had a cross that, a, a, you know, uh, uh, one of the, you know, homeboys made for me. And uh, I came back and it was missing. I came back and it was missing. So, you know, that's like a major disrespect for somebody to take your stuff, yeah. take your stuff down off the wall. You got somebody stealing so, your Quran yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was like crazy disrespect. So anyways, I hit my bunkie like, man, what's up, bunkie? You took my stuff down, you know? So I'm ready to, you know, catch a fade with my bunkie or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then my bunkie says, yeah, you know, I took that down. He was older than me. He was mm -hmm. my elder, you know. Yeah, I took that down, bunkie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we can be having that stuff up in here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? Like, you know, like, you're just, like I'm going to just punk out like that. And so anyway, to make a long story short, my bunkie, he tells me, you know, and he has some old, old school, you know, like way out perspective on, the cross but he was like well, he said when you know youngster what that cross represents is the cross up of life right <laughs> <laughs> so he made this extravagant excuse as to why he took my stuff down but he backed it up with the st story of Yusef mm. right and he told me the story of Yusef with the Alpha Quran mm. verbatim he mm. told me the whole complete story of Yusef Right? The whole complete story of Yusuf. And so what ended up happening is Allah wa ta'ala softened my heart towards him. Right? Mm -hmm. Towards him. So much so that I would monitor his salah. Mm -hmm. I would be like, Bunky, it's time for you to pray. Mm -hmm. It's time for you. If, if they brought pork, I'd be like, nah, Bunky, you can't eat that. I can, let me have that. <laughs> it's pork, you know, you can't eat that. Hmm. And so I started to watch after his Islam. That's the way Allah would, would you know, brought me into this. And so even at times, because he had taught me about wudu, and if I knew he had done something to break his wudu, I would say, nah, Bucky, you can't pray. You got to wash up. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you did this earlier, remember? And so that was Allah to Baruch Ta'ala. You know, working, 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 working on it. And so eventually one time, and you know, may Allah Taala preserve him and it go from in his mercy. I mean, it was a brother named Jamil Shabazz from Crenshaw Cafe in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He was the he was the emir on the yard, that prison yard that I was in down south. And uh, he came to me one day and he was like, man, you know, you need to come to Juma. And 
and I was like, man, I ain't, I'm not going to Juma. <laughs> and he was like, nah, you need to come. You actually really need to come to Juma, man. And I told him, I said, man, you know, why am I going to listen to you? You in here with me. <laughs> right? You in here with me for crime. If you work so much, you know what I'm saying, this Islam stuff, why would I listen to you? He said, no, the imam is coming from the streets to talk to us and give us the Juma khutbah. I said, okay, how come? You know, I don't know what he's talking about, khutbah, this, that, whatever. So I, I come over there, man, just to listen to him because I need something. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really trying at this time because I'm close to going home and I'm really scared to go home and not have a structured life, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, that gang life or that you know, street life, it's just a structure, you know. You wake up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and you know what I'm saying? And you start, mm -hmm. you know, getting ready, so to speak. And then you hit the streets at nighttime and you back in the morning before the sun come up, you know, and you move <laughs> like that. And so it's rules and things to the game. So anyways, what ended up happening was I went and I had heard the Adhan before, but by Allah to Barakwa to Allah, I had never heard the Adhan the way I heard the Adhan. And so it was a brother named Sam. He was an OG crip from from uh, Merced that gave the that gave the adhan. And when he said Hayya ala salah, and he put his hand like this by his ear, and he said Hayya ala falah, and he put his hand by his, his ear, I was like, whatever it is that he's calling for and 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 listening. See, I perceived it that he was listening for an answer, some type of an answer. That's why he was, you know, cause he, you know, I thought he was like a old dude listening to something, right? And so I was like, whatever he's asking for, whatever he's li listening for, I, if this is the spot to get it, I need it. So I'm gonna be right here, right? So I sat there, you know, and um, and mashallah to barakallah, you know, it was, it was a thing to where the brothers was very straightforward. The brothers was very strong. The very brothers was very like, you know, I had to, before I could even take Shahada, I had to learn how to pray. I had to learn how to make wudu, how to make ghusl. I had to learn my tahiyyat. I had to learn my, my Ibrahim. I had to learn all of this stuff before I could even come and say I wanted to, to take my Shahada. You know what I'm saying? So they really had a real strict new Shahada program, you know? And, and, and if it hadn't been for them brothers, I would have just got, I would have just said, hey, you know, I'm Muslim. And I would have came home and I wouldn't have had no prayer. I wouldn't have had, you know, the, the understanding that I had to seek knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So, so the biggest thing, you know, about, about you know, you know, formally like being, you know, uh, uh, being a hoodlum or being whatever, you know, it, 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 and coming to Islam, you know, Islam saved my life. And Islam, you know, quite frankly, saved a lot of other people's lives. Man, mine Cause, too. Because I wasn't, I mean, you know, I'm talking about, like, <laughs> I wasn't no good, you know. <laughs> I wasn't no good, but, you know, not to, you know, dwell on it or anything like that. But, you know, that that, that part right there, you know, is like, uh, you know, and, and Allah, put, Allah put a lot of other Muslims in my life along the line so that Islam or being a Muslim wasn't a foreign thing to me mm -hmm. it wasn't a foreign thing to me it wasn't like way out like something like i could not absolutely positively never understand mm -hmm. you know so i have muslim friends and stuff like that when i was growing up mm -hmm. who you know and a lot of us did growing up in black neighborhoods sometimes you know I, I had a friend named abdul i had a friend named ferris ali i had a you know a couple of other friends you know uh abasi rasheed raheem you know, mm -hmm. so uh, it was all then, you know, being able to go back and look at how how good those Muslim people were to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In my life that made it like, oh, yeah, that's why he was like that. That's why he was like that. That's why he was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lot, you know, Something and so that. that's just the thing. You know, it's like, you know, the biggest thing that it is that I can say is, is though is experiencing the Rahmah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah Taala wa Taala says that you know uh, uh, that He is but a mercy to mankind. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so feeling that mercy and tasting that mercy, you know what I'm saying, is 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 the biggest thing. So you know we 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 can come to Dean sometimes, and you know we can still be 
very uh, dogmatic. We can still be very, uh, you know, gangster, gangster minded, <laughs> even with this dean. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the brother don't do this right. The brother ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, you know, you can't wear that like that. You gotta be like this tall or this <laughs> short or this long. Your pants mm -hmm. gotta be folded like that. I, and you know, that's the type of stuff that. You know, those gangsterisms that we used to have, we got to kind of like let those go. Mm -hmm. And we got to pick up some of this rahmah, you know, that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's my story. You know, alhamdulillah. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika wa shadu wa la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfirullah wa natubu ilayhi. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Barakallahu feek, habibi.